Hello and welcome to this video. This will be about the Arteon Nixie watch from the Arteon edition of the game. This is one of the legendary 10 copies and in this video we will take an in-depth look at what this thing can do. There was already an amazing unboxing video by Lupa87. I'll put the link to that in the description. Be sure to check that out if you haven't already. So first, let's take a look at the tube itself. This piece is very heavy, it weighs about 2.2 kilos. It has an opening on one side where you can see the watch. One side comes off like this, the other side does not come off. I guess it's glued or something. And inside there is this little ring for pulling the watch out. You see the watch comes out like that. Slides very nicely on this rail and it's attached to this kind of back plate or panel. So on the back of this panel, there's pretty much nothing, but you can see that the watch is held in place using straps. So it's relatively easy to remove. And I'm going to do that in a second. So before we remove the watch from the back panel, let's just check the weight of this thing. 446 grams or so, about a pound, the watch including the back panel. So now I've removed the watch from the back panel. You can see the size of this thing is really big in comparison with my everyday wristwatch. Let's just put this thing on the scales. It's about 185 grams, which is more than six ounces, really quite big and heavy. So the watch itself is really beautiful. You see the leather straps, buttons on the side. It has a USB micro type B for charging. This is the button for the LED. We will check that out in a minute. Three buttons on this side for various functions. And on the back, there is a compartment. This is the battery compartment for the separate LED. So let's check just how big this thing is. I have some calipers right here. See if I can get that across here. So across, it's more than 65 millimeters. Looking at it from the side, you can see the curved glass. It's kind of like a glass dome. Let's check the thickness of that very carefully. More than one inch, just the thickness of this thing. You can see all these little components inside here, up here, and the Nixie tubes, of course. This is the comparison with my regular everyday wristwatch. This thing is really quite amazing. Here is the watch sitting on my wrist. Now, I don't have very big wrists, but you can probably tell that this is not really <laughs> convenient probably for walking around. It would probably easily bump into things or get caught on things and yeah. 
but it's truly amazing to watch. And yeah, no pun intended. So finally, let's fire up this thing. So the top button, this gives you the date. Let's try that again. We have 14th of October, 2019. The middle button, this shows the time, 17.53 currently. And then the final button, this is the battery, 92% left, and the temperature, 25.4 degrees Celsius. You see that whenever I press this button, or any button for that matter, there is this little sequence of numbers, and this is called a slot machine effect. This is to prevent cathode poisoning, which is an aging of these Nixie tubes. So by activating all the different numbers inside the tube in sequence, or in some random sequence, uh, you increase the lifetime of the tube. You mitigate this cathode poisoning which can deteriorate the lifetime of the tubes. Finally, let's check out the LED. It's activated by this button on the side. It's a blue LED, just like in the game. There you see it. It's pretty powerful too. And as I mentioned, it's powered solely by this battery in the back. You can access it by removing these tiny little screws here. Just replace the battery. It's good to go again. It works independently of the power of the rest of the watch. Now in the game this is what's showing whether you're visible or not to the enemies. If you're visible then the LED is on and if you're hidden in darkness the LED is off. So same color and appearance like in the game. Very nice. Now let's have a look at the different settings. So there are three setup menus, one tied to each of the three buttons. So let's start from the top. So you access the settings by just holding the button for three seconds or so. And first setup, first setting here is the year. 2019 increasing or so 2033 34 35 special numbers for this game series let's go back to 2019 one button is increasing the setting one button is decreasing the setting and then middle button goes to the next setting this is now the month See, it doesn't go beyond 12. Let's set that back to October. And then the date. Now here, you can also see the comma light up. So in this particular tube, the comma is actually quite bright and quite clear. But this one, where it's showing the temperature, there the comma is actually not very clear, not easy to see. Just press that one more time to finish the setup of the date. So date is properly set. You can see these little LEDs light up inside there. It's a little bit hard to see, kind of covered by the tubes. I'll show those in more detail later. Now let's look at the time setup. Just hold the middle button for about three seconds to access the time setup. First setting is whether you want the 24 hour format or 12 hour format. I'll go for 24. Now this is the time of course, 1810, so it's properly set. You can set the minutes separately and the hours separately. Now this particular setting, this is the accelerometer here. So just like a modern smartwatch, you can have this one kind of turn on when you raise your arm. And the way you do that is, in this particular setup, you change this accelerometer 
zero means off and one means on and the way it works is that it memorizes the setting it memorizes the angle or position at which you toggle this what value from zero to one so let's say this is where I kind of raise my arm I set it to one in this position let's see if this works kind of lower it down you see that it's you see that it's off at the moment and then when I raise it it goes on 1811 let's see that one more time let's see the time one more time I raise it into position it goes on what I don't really like about this accelerometer setting is that when you hold it in the active position it doesn't stay on it just keeps cycling off and on as you can see here so I'm just holding it upright and instead of showing the time continuously it's just activating and deactivating I guess it's a matter of choice but I prefer to leave this setting off because activating the watch with just a button on the side has a pretty nice feel to it too so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that setting now Now finally, let's have a look at the general setup. It's tied to this third button, which is otherwise used for checking the battery level and the temperature. So let's hold that for three seconds. Now there are several selections here. First one is the brightness of the tubes. Maybe it's not so easy to see on this video, but you can kind of see how it increases in intensity and then drops back down to one low intensity at one so seven steps of intensity I will leave that at three which I find to be just about right second setting is for controlling these little LEDs on the inside so these are RGB red green blue LEDs and each of them has a setting so eight is maximum power on that particular color and then zero means that particular color is turned off so you can control each of these little diodes independently let's see how that works so now I set this is red green I set the green setting to zero you see that it has a different tone now different color I can cycle through these different settings now red and green are off so the remaining light is just blue if you turn also the blue one off it will be Whoop. there we go now the backlight is completely off so you can customize this to your liking as much or as little as you want for the different colors in principle I think this should be 512 combinations so 8 by 8 by 8 but actually because it's from 0 to 8 it gives 9 settings per color so 9 by 9 by 9 instead which is 729 the next setting is a little bit strange or it took me a while to figure out so when you press one of these buttons like let's say you press the date button so first it shows you the day and month the first entry is day and month and then the second entry is the year so this is the duration the first entry is displayed this is the duration the second entry is displayed so let's say you need a little bit more time to read off the day and month because you're always confused whether it's day month or month day you would increase this number and that would keep the day and month entry visible for longer this is in units of quarters of a second so setting 16 would mean four seconds so in this case the day and month would be shown for four seconds and the year would be shown for two seconds so eight quarters of a second I will go ahead and set this back to the default value which is two seconds for the year sorry day and month and two seconds for the year 
is the same for the battery and the temperature setting. So the first entry is shown for this duration of time, second setting is shown for this duration of time. Now this setting here, this is the lag correction. So if you notice from repeated or continuous use that your watch is either running ahead or running behind, you can set the correction. This is in units of 30 seconds per day. So if your watch is running behind by let's say 30 seconds one day, you would set this to one and it would automatically kind of speed up or compensate for the lag. It has both a positive and a negative setting. Now I'm going in the negative direction. This is if the watch is too fast, this would slow down the time or compensate in the opposite direction. Zero means no correction and then it has one value going in one direction or conversely going in the opposite direction. So this would be a negative correction although the tubes cannot really show a minus sign. I haven't noticed any lag yet so I'll just leave it at the default setting. This is the temperature 29.1 degrees currently I guess it's because I'm holding it. This is in Celsius degrees Celsius. So you cannot see the period there is supposed to be a period here, so 29.1 degrees. For some reason, the period is quite clear on this tube, but not so clear on this tube. Anyway, in this setting, you can compensate for the temperature if it's off by a little. You would compare it with a house thermometer and calibrate that to match whatever the actual temperature is. I'm not sure where exactly the temperature is located, the temperature sensor is located inside this watch. So I don't know if you're wearing it, if it would show more like the body temperature or more like the ambient temperature. This seems to be a little bit more towards actually the body temperature or kind of at least increasing from being in my hand here. Then the final setting, this is the slot machine effect. If it's set to 6, then the slot machine effect is on. If you set it to zero, slot machine effect goes off. So let's try that out. You see that the watch just lights up immediately, showing the values immediately. There is no slot machine effect. So I don't know how this would affect the lifetime of the tubes, but I would prefer to leave the slot machine effect on, both because it's pretty nice and because it potentially increases the lifetime of the tubes. So those were the various functions of this Arteon Nixie watch. Interestingly enough, there is no timer, so you will need to keep track of your gas mask yourself when it's time to change that filter. It doesn't give you a timer for that, even though that's a central feature of the watch in the game. But other than that, I think it's super nice. It has these amazing Nixie tubes, the nice little RGB lighting in the back, LED on the side, and it's just proper amazing. Some of you may be curious what happens if I connect it to a computer, so I'll go ahead and do that right now. This is a Windows 10 system by the way. Just the regular cable from a PlayStation 4 for charging the controller. And there is nothing happening on the computer. You can, however, see a separate LED, a blue LED, on the inside of the watch here. And this one is only lit when you charge the watch. It goes off once the watch is fully charged. This is what the charging looks like in darkness. There is a blue LED in there as I mentioned. The one that will go off once the battery is fully charged. I can activate the blue LED on the side of the watch with a little button and this is pretty bright. It's difficult to tell from the video, but it's certainly quite bright. And then finally, 
firing up the watch you can see those beautiful Nixie tubes in action along with the RGB LEDs up here Finally, as a little bonus, let's have a look at these images. This is the Arteum trench knife, made completely by hand by my brother. This is even more unique than the Arteum edition, so just one single copy, not even 10 copies available. And I cannot do this justice, so I will just let the images speak for themselves. I will leave a link in the description to his homepage where you can check out this knife and other knives that he will make. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please check out the other video by Loop87 which shows the unboxing of the Arteum edition featuring all the different items that it contains. The link is in the description below. And please also check out my brother's webpage for the amazing Metro Arteon trench knife. Thank you.